Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, live coding uh, within the Construct 3 for the runes of Ariel. And today we're going to focus on the battle menu. We're going to be finishing up on the menu, uh, the battle menu. And uh, let me just show you what that is. Uh, and the battle menu is uh, when you start up a battle, uh, there is a large key here at the top right. And you can click it, and then you can continue, see what options there are, go to the inventory, and quit. Uh, so the only thing that's already implemented here is the continue button. And that's it. So I'm going to implement all the rest right now. Um, and first we're going to see how exactly that works. Now you have to know that the battle menu interaction is here in a separate group and we're going to use constructs functionality to enable and disable groups uh, to be able to uh, have a situation where all of this uh, interaction using the mouse is not doing anything uh, when the menu is not showing. Uh, and then again, things like picking up cards and picking up scrolls and ending your turn and stuff like that should not be available when the menu is shown as well. So it's mutually exclusive. Um, how does that happen? Well, uh, this uh, specially designed uh, event sheet for the battle menu has a number of functions. So first and foremost, there is a function called show battle menu, and this shows the menu layer and immediately hides menu options, menu inventory, and menu quit. And if you go and look at the layers here in the battle layout, you see that this is uh, like a nested layer. The menu options is inside the menu, the menu inventory is inside the menu, and the menu quit is inside the menu. So what happens actually is that this menu is shown, but immediately those three sub layers are hidden. Um, then what we do is we set the battle interaction to deactivate it. And if you recall from previous videos, the battle interaction is actually a group, a group that's uh, responsible for handling all the interaction inside the battle. So that means picking up a card, picking up a scroll, etc. We're deactivating that. So whenever the uh, the the dialogue is being displayed, actually there's nothing happening uh, for the rest. And then we actually call card rearrange, and that's because in this card rearrange function, uh, we make sure that the cards are uh, unplayable and they become grey, actually. So that's why this is uh, called here. And then we call a timer called battle interaction, and here in that time and when it fires we set the battle menu interaction activated so you might ask okay why don't we immediately set the battle um, menu interaction activated here after the battle interaction well that's because um, this is generally shown when we click the the button the, the button with the key in it um, and this happens so fast that Actually, he does the interaction uh, of the button click when the menu is shown and when the menu is hidden right at the same time. So you need to remember that if you click the, the button again, uh, when the menu is shown, then he will hide the menu again. So clicking it, if this is immediately switched, clicking it will show and hide the menu uh, automatically again. And that's not what needs to happen. So we just wait for 0.1 seconds, just time, enough time for the user to let go of his mouse and stop clicking that button. Uh, and that way, um, the uh, battle menu interaction is activated. And this battle menu interaction actually is this group. And then we say, okay, in this group, when we click continue, we hide the battle menu, which is this function here, where we set this layer menu invisible which will automatically make these sub layers uh, invisible and then we deactivate this uh, menu again and activate the battle interaction so basically um this um and calling rearrange cards by the way will automatically reactivate so will no longer make them gray 
those cards and automatically uh, go in there and switch. So what happens here uh, when we click one of the options, uh, then this uh, action select battle menu option is shown. And this is this function here. Um, the only thing that happens here is we uh, set the menu selection, which is a global string here, to the option we're getting passed along. And the um, option being passed along is the action of the button itself. So if we go to uh, the battle uh, interface and we show this menu, then we show, uh, let's lock this hint here and we go uh, to uh, the button menu you see here uh, the menu button sorry uh, we see here that the action is called continue the action goes options the action is called inventory should be but still called op options so like that and here the option is quit okay so that's what happens when we pass uh, the uh, menu option to this select battle menu option what happens is it sets the variable and it clears uh, the buttons and clearing those buttons will pick all of the buttons where action is different from this menu or a parameter called force clear um, and uh, generic text where it's equal to the menu and set the font to uh, white basically or force clear this is uh, some function we copied from the main menu which we'll probably not be using here but uh, it's it's there anyhow so that's basically it so there's also the hovering logic where we set to opacity 30 or opacity 0 uh, that's basically the same things that are happening in the main menu for example um, so make sure to check out the video on the main menu to have more information on how this highlighting stuff uh, works. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to see how, what that looks like and what we're going to implement. Yeah. So let's see. Fight. We fight, we press this button and we see that this is implemented. Um, the cards is being gray and they are gray by calling that rearrange function. We can continue, but all of the rest of the options is not implemented. So the first thing, let's, let's start with an easy thing, right? Uh, let's start with this uh, quit button. If we click it, we should have a confirmation. Are you sure you want to quit? And when we click yes, then we're going to quit. That's uh, what uh, what's going to happen. So how are we going to implement this? Well, actually, this is really, really similar to what uh, is on the uh, main menu. What's the main menu here? In the main menu, you see that there are also many um, layers here implemented. And there's also one layer called quit. And on this one layer called quit, you've got already this interface where you've got a label that says are you sure one quit and then two menu buttons denoting yes and no and you can see this action is yes and this action is no so what we're going to do effectively is we're going to copy that we're going to the battle menu here to the battle and we have to make sure now we have this layer selected because we effectively want to copy those controls to this uh, to this uh, layer. I'm going to click somewhere, going to click paste, um, and now we see that we're going to want to, this is on the menu, and the menu is on top, uh, right, center back, Z burger is at the bottom of layer, and uh, no. Yeah, that's a good question. It's to the bottom of it. So that means this is coming on top. So what we're going to have to do is put that menu here. So not make it any uh, sub-menu, frankly. Um, or what we could do is say add another layer below 
and call it uh, menu uh, background, for example. That's also a possibility. I hadn't thought of that. And let me pick all of these things that are on the uh, menu here. Make sure that everything else is like locked. Too many layers really. Everything is locked. So we can select everything right now. Um, let's already lock all the rest. That one. And then we can put this on the menu back. Okay, that's exactly what I want. So uh, the uh, the menu with all the things that were in this layer were obscuring actually these uh, sub layers. So that's what something I didn't think about really when I created these sub layers earlier. Um, okay, never mind. We've got a solution. So we've got to uh, lock this one unlock these ones or at least i want to unlock this one um, so i can mess around with these text so this is a bit too big let's make it a bit smaller zoom in a bit are you sure you want to quit yes or no and so these ones make them a little bit smaller as well and i'm making the same size like that and um, maybe they want to be a bit more to the left than this as well and align this properly these are not properly aligned neither align to the top and do that okay great so let's run test a lot test early that's the holy credo. Fight. We click and we see nothing. We click and we go to inventory or options. Uh, no, we want to quit, of course. So quit doesn't show anything yet. So what we want to do is uh, da -da -da -da. we want to go to the one left button clicked on the menu button and the context is not menu we want to see uh, actually we want to go to the battle switch menu and the battle switch and then okay then we want to see when we uh, switch to quit when this menu we're playing past is quit then we want to make this layer visible so how does that work it, boom. we want to go and show the battle interface quit okay that's it that's good um, but the only thing is here that now because it's also such a button uh, he uh, does the same logic here as this uh, these buttons here so it makes them invisible uh, unless you hover over them and uh, they never become 100 percent unless you click them right there so it, it's really treating them the same way as the buttons here at the left hand side and it's not something i want i actually want them to be visible all of the time so we're gonna have to make a distinction between these four buttons here at the left hand side and these two buttons here at the right hand side. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, set a context and this context here is quit and the context for these uh, options here which I'll uh, have to unlock again these are called menu. So that's what I'll do. I'll go into uh, the battle menu here. And in order to have this logic of hovering and selecting um, not uh, apply for those uh, button, we need to check if the context is menu. And this is really happening here, but it's probably not happening here with clear. And, and button menu context is menu, so that's also happening. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, so the reason why that was not working really was uh, actually because uh, when we call the battle menu, we, we open up the battle 
uh, layout, the, the layout, the, the event sheet behind it, if you go up, it includes inventory. And in inventory, I just adapted it off, uh, off camera. Um, this was not added. This uh, context equals uh, menu, it should be. The, the menu button, menu context was not added. And this one here as well. If we go to the logic here. Uh, context equals menu, context equals menu. That means that um, as it was included also in the, uh, in the event sheet that were called when the battle started, uh, this uh, is also executed constantly. So, so that um, is something that shouldn't be happening, um, uh, but we fixed it here by checking uh, if uh, this logic is indeed this uh, context menu, yes or no. Uh, but the easiest way to do that, actually by far, is uh, also disabling and enabling here this uh, inventory uh, interaction. But this inventory interaction should actually be disabled just uh, on upon starting of the battle. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go and go to the event sheet of the battle and on start of layout one of the things that should be happening is actually um, it's set group active um, inventory interaction we deactivate that. So that's what we should do actually uh, here. Um, so what we're now going to do it's going to test that again and we're going to see that now now that the inf inventory interaction is disabled so right now it is being disabled um, that means that those events in the inventory sheet are not activated anymore so this really is listening to all of the uh, event sheets uh, stuff which is happening in the battle layout right now or rather in the battle menu layout uh, in the battle menu event sheet so this is happening right now so that's great what we can now do is check for a button click with the action equals yes and if that happens then we should close off the menu so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, do something in the battle menu like that we are going to go and see for a left must left mouse button click equals context menu so that's what's going to happen here um and we can just make a copy of that um or what are we going to do um yes Let's make a copy of that, add an extra condition, I pressed C on the keyboard and a new action, compare the instance variable called action, if it's yes, then we should do something and that's not all of this of course, that's actually from the browser we call um, exit, what is it, uh, I forget what it is, or is it browser? Yeah, it is browser to close, of course. So let's test that. Point. Up. Quit. Yes. Not happening. Actually, why is that? Left button contact is open. Oh, it should be menu, of course. Uh, action is yes because it's not context in menu. We go to the console here. And we quit. Yes, and that's what happens. So the question is, what does happen if we click no? I suppose we just close up this uh, this interface here. So uh, this, uh, this is a little uh, dialogue. So we copy it, say no. And then what we do here is the same as pressing escape, which is this. Test again. No, I don't want to do that. This is what I want to do. Up. Yes, all right. So this is the same as pressing escape. So that's it. That's for the easy part. 
so this concludes uh, the first video in this uh, series where we finish up the battle uh, menu. Um, I encourage you to uh, continue looking at my next uh, videos uh, for this battle menu. But until then, please like, uh, please subscribe, and if you want a full source code of the game, um, please make sure to support me on my Patreon page.